From now on, you'll never suffer again. So don't worry. Now go to sleep. Indeed, the mistress is much like you. It does run in the family. Doctor. Alright. <sighs> now do you feel like you can give uh, opinions on this? Well, so what do you think? Do you think Aya is like her dad? I mean, she says, Maria literally says, she's she's like you. But what do you think that means? That's the thing. Do you, do, does it mean like, oh, she takes in vagrants and cares for them? The idea of you is what she's like. Yeah. Or like, is she literally killing people? Like, I mean, you have to think about it. He was killing people for a doll collection. Is Aya killing people to make them not suffer anymore? Is she making a doll collection? You know, what, what's yeah. happening? And th that is a good point. Like, the concept of, like, she is in love with the idea of the doctor. Like, I'm, I'm sure the dick must be insane, but, like, the idea of somebody who's doing doctoring stuff and making dolls, but then is, like... It's cult-like, you know, and, yeah. it, and it entrances people, and, you know, sociopaths often, you know, en entrance people like that. Hey, and that, BG and Person did this. Oh, nice. BG Person also did, um, uh, Mermaid Swamp. Oh, good. I think, I think I remember, I think I mentioned this last year, but, like, literally go through BG Person's translated cool. stuff, and, and you'll find the go-to list of, of knockout, uh, RPGs, or RPG horrors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hugging the dolls. We, we promised. promised. So I can't ever forget. All together now. End. And steam achieving the promise, which uh, with ha which has a a symbol of pinky promising. All right. All right. Yeah, very good. Really, there's a lot of good scares in there. Like, it a lot really of really was. good small scares. Three hours, three and a half hours, 16 gems, seven continues, normal mode. Cool. Yeah. Blood mode. Blood mode, okay. What does that even mean? In the museum. So, any more uh, closing thoughts? Um, you know, there are some things I have to wonder about, like, you know, there apparently there's a lot of different alternate dimensions of what happens and whatnot. One thing that's not very clear to me, what's the deal with Aya's mom? Is she just really into the doctor and she's like okay with him experimenting on people? Is she afraid what he'll do to her and her daughter if, if she tells someone? Is she a victim? Is it something in between? Does we she... never saw this one. No, I don't think we have. That's probably in hell mode. Yeah, but go on. But, you know, is, is it a thing where she's like, she loves him, so she can't leave, and maybe she's just deluding herself, you know? There's there's a lot of different things. Um, You know, either way, obviously, she's doing something wrong by staying with the guy if she knows about it. But what is the extent of which she knows about it, you know? You don't yeah. know. And I commented earlier that, like, I don't want to know what that is used for. I commented earlier that, like, initially it's almost like... Oh, whoa, yeah. Green sleeves. Oh, huh? that's pretty neat. It's almost um, a thing where, like, the the mom takes villain position and like the mom cannot be a good person you know because of but all is the, it, is the it, stuff that has happened is it a thing that's like warped by being a ghost you know yeah you that's know too. or what about Aya's perception how much do we have to give credit to her perception about things she is an 11 year old yeah oh this is neat oh cute so we is got this fan art maybe it is we got doll maker oh! Whoa. That's really cute. Oh, let's make me. Oh, 
All right. They might not have red hair. Yeah, that one's me. Yeah. That one. Share more thoughts if you got him. Um, you know, so it's a little confusing about, like, you know, what is the extent these people know about his experiments? And, I mean, obviously, Maria, you could see her as a complete victim. Yeah. You know, she's manipulated. She's Stockholmed. Got taken in by this guy. Um, you know, we don't know. That could be her only option. I mean, she was starving out on the streets. Yeah. Part of this. I can give her the hook hand. You know, and the real villain of this, I think, has to be the father. I mean, yeah. He's the name of the game. But, you know, I am left with this feeling of, like, maybe the mom wasn't. You know, completely right as well. Yeah, double eye patch. It's pretty good. So, are we going to get the rest of the gems? I don't know about that. Well, I had a lot of good. I had a lot of good times here, but that's fair. Well, then we encourage you to look at it for yourself. Yes. we'll definitely be looking into it. Buy I'm this game curious. on Steam. Yeah, yeah, buy it yourself. Um, it might also be on Itchio. Support the creators. Yeah. Or VG person and Sen and everyone else involved. Make it such a cute little character. Oh, little angel wings. Flames, cool. But yeah, yeah. What do you think? You know, do you think Aya's gone crazy? Do you think, you know, she was messed up as a kid, but she can be redeemed in adulthood? Or do you think it runs in the family? Maybe. And that there's no coming back from it. I kind of think that the game is wanting to have a thing where she's evil and crazy and stuff. I think maybe it's meant to be vague. Yeah, I do too. But you know, she does do things, but as an 11 year old, you know. That's pretty creepy. There's only so much you can hold a kid accountable for things. And they're, you know, it's pretty weird that she's doing it at 11, but a kid can heal, you know? Yeah. But then there's also the fact that she is doing creepy stuff as a kid. Like, she's... But she's doing it because maybe that's the only thing she's seen and she sees no other way, you know? But, you know, she is, like, cutting open dogs and... But in the beginning, she says, you know, I know what my father did all along. But is that her adult self having her perception of, oh, I knew what he was doing just to, you know, feel guilt? To, you know, who knows? You know, the 11-year-old could have known nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's the true art we want. Yeah. But, all right, everyone. Do you have any thoughts? Um, Really good game. A lot of good authentic scares. I feel like it doesn't have too, too deep of characters, but... Great music. It does have pretty good music. We didn't get to hear a lot of it because we have to yell over it, but... um, I feel like the fact that it has, like, bad... I don't, I don't want to say that it has bad characters. I think that the characters all behave erratically in a way that I can believe... It's not as though they're acting out of character, though. You might literally delude yourself into thinking that they act wrong, but, like, you were wrong about them in the first place. Kind of like every character in this game uh, thinking about the dad, you know? Yeah. Because, um, like, all of them are like, yeah, he's crazy and he's going to kill everyone, but he's not going to kill my daughter. You know, he's not going to kill me. And, like, you know... You're you're tricking yourself. You're deluding yourself. Yep, yep, yep. Let's make this one smaller, huh? Boop. All right, get out of here, boobs. Get out of here, boobs. Um, but yeah, like interesting characters, pretty good art, good music. Uh, a lot of really good scares. Yeah. Pretty creepy thing, and then you have the repay value of the gems. I don't know how much I agree with that. I kind of just like the idea of saying, okay, did you beat the game? You can get the endings, but then again. Um, it's a short game. I'm fine with it. It is a really short game, yeah. And then they also give you the opportunity to literally go back and get everything. I mean, gem. I think if you're recording it, obviously, you're not going to want to go back and get all the gems and then have to commentate on top of that because how much can you really commentate if we're just trying to wall scrape everything yeah that um, that does make very but, long lps but rest assured we are curious and we do we're gonna look back on it and we definitely encourage everyone else to buy the game and play it yourself and you know um wall scrape yeah 
Get That's them, what these games are for. Get them gems. You know, uh, you know. I'm sure Sen and other RPG creators put a lot of work into these things to hide little secrets for us. Also, Mad Father is only ten bucks on Steam, and it usually goes on sale for the holidays or for Halloween. So yeah, yeah. support the creator. Get into RPG horrors. Make your own. I'm currently yes. making my own. Well, they're super easy to make, such as they are. Like. It certainly does not take an entire, you know, easy. Easy. It's, it's 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 easier than having a whole team and trying to make a triple A game, huh? Yeah. Like at the very least, you could you, you could make an RPG pixel with research and a lot of time. You can make the, a game yourself. Yeah, and and that's reasonable because it's like, okay, I bought the software. What do I do? Okay, now you just follow tutorials and build the game in there. Okay, yeah. cool. It's, you know, it's not easy, but you can do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a very conceivable skill to learn. But the thing is, is that. The fact that it is easy to do should not make it, you know, trivialized because this is a really cool game. And sometimes because of its limitations, like little things like the the poltergeists knocking shit over behind you or you have to get creative when there's limitations. Ghosts trolling you. Yeah. You know, this is I think this is a Brian May quote, the guitarist of Queen. Um, but he talked about how a medium's limitations will always become the thing most iconic about it. So tracking or record scratching, like tracking on a VCR or record scratching on a record or static on the radio, like those are things you're really not supposed to hear. Those are downsides to that medium. But they're what make those things iconic. If you want to signal to somebody that they're watching a radio, you know, listening to the radio, then you put radio static on there. You know, an 8-bit game does not look like that as a stylistic choice. It looks like that because they didn't have the technology to do anything better. But now that we look back, you know, me and Sarah, who were born after that era and did not have NESs growing up, can still feel, quote unquote, nostalgic and understand that part of gaming history. And when we see a game that comes out now that is 8-bit as a choice on purpose, that means something, you know, or 16-bit. Yeah. Or something that emulates that idea like Minecraft. And there is also the idea that the less you can see and make out of a game, the less details, the more of the unknown there is. I was going to mention that. And that's, 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 why, good. that's why pixel games, you know, even PS1 and PS2 games really, really hit the mark on a lot of horror is because you had the bad yeah. graphics that you would have to imagine. Uh, imagine and supplement and be creative. And so that really, you know, gave a good atmosphere of, what exactly am I seeing? You know, is that blood? Is that the dress? Is that yeah? What's going on there? Where did he cut her? You know, and and you just freak yourself out. It's, yeah, it's great. If you want to torture a human properly, just give them the tools to do it themselves, and they'll do the work for you. Yeah. <laughs> and like, if you're subscribed to Markiplier, or if you like, go back and and watch collections of horror games like the Shitstorm of Scariness available from Two Best Friends Play or Scary Game Squad on I think Jesse Cox's channel. Um, I forget exactly where it's hosted. But you'll see that there's a lot of games recently that have been using PS1 styles. And people are making PS1 style games. Because, like, not just for the nostalgia. It is a part of it. Because now people who were kids when the PS1 were out are now 30-something. And can make games as a hobby. You know, that's a thing that they can do. And soon we'll get PS2 um, nostalgia. And oh, kids, you yeah. know, our age who were growing up in the PS2 or GameCube era can now be nostalgic for that and we'll make games for that era but you know it's a thing where this is not just a nostalgia thing it is because of the grit because of that grain because it is harder to observe and see and understand you make the experience worse for somebody and in horror that's exactly what you want yeah <laughs> totally agree totally agree and and that's why rpg pixel horror is so special i you love know? it it's one of my favorite genres of game i think like there was a lot of people who were just making it because they were popular or making it because they wanted to make a horror game and lack the technology to do anything else but because of those limitations like the weird puzzles like i actually now have a playlist of these it includes real rpgs like omori and hylix and off and there's more coming yes so i'm gonna ask you to play more for me yes well we do one every year Wait, at least one more but this time it's a happy one <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i have a playlist of weird rpgs um i've not actually sorted it so some of them are real rpgs that have combat and like turn-based action in a typical jrpg arc like hylix or amori or off or space funeral which is actually airing uh relatively close to this uh but then you also have 
you know, games like this where they're basically just puzzle games with a kind of RPG camera and that's all. Um, but yeah, it's very, very specific to the genre, to the era of people making games like this through the early 2000s and 210s. But like, it's so cool. It's not just a product of the times. They're good now, you know? Definitely. And then you can see the remake, quote unquote, like you could have gone the RE2 remake of like, yeah, we're going to remake it as a triple A third person shooter with a whole bunch of glitz and glamour. Which is good, by the way. Which is I good. Like that. Which I is like good. That. But this game was remade and kept all of its old original shit. Like all of the things that made the original game bad are still in there. And that's exactly what we wanted. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, as as much as I, you know, make fun of Ogre, it's you know that it's one of Sen's game when Ogre shows up, and yeah. that's just nice. He's a creative thumbprint, and it's nice seeing him show up. You know, he's like a relative that you don't hate because you don't have any reason to, but like you hate seeing him. You're like, oh. I love it because it's the the relative that everyone else hates, and you can talk shit with him about him to, together. Yeah, you know? you know, and he is supposed to be evil. It's just that all he does is for like further the plot. Like he hands you the water, and he takes the father to hell, and like yada yada yada. Yada anyway. yada yada. All right, thank you guys. Closing comments, Sarah. No, no, I'm good. This this now might actually be airing after Halloween, so sorry everyone. <laughs> Uh, but it's always Halloween in our hearts. Yes. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween. R.I.P. Big Boobs. R.I.P. Big Boobs. Bye. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. And I've been Sarah. You have trouble remember that? Yeah. I was going to say Aya, but I don't know. I fumbled it. I fumbled it. Hurry, you, click it off. You click couldn't, it. You couldn't, you couldn't stick the landing? No, 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 no. Well, thank you for showing up and, and indulging me, recording with me. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for showing up in cosplay as well. You're really swinging for the fences here. Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel bad because I just have my shitty makeup on. Next time, we'll put the wig on you. <laughs> uh, but then again, like, Sarah only shows up every, you know, 10 LPs. So, like, it's a special occasion anyway. May as well do something for it. Well, thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming on. Always a guest on my show. Always a welcome guest. Uh, but, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Um, if you would like to see more of Sarah, she was in my Dead Space LP. Last Halloween, she played a game called My Hole is a Mouth of Dirt. And before that, she played Half-Life 1 with me, which is a fantastic LP. And then we have a really old LP that's kind of okay, uh, where we played Dishonored. Yeah, yeah. It was good. It's just that our audio quality is low. And we'll be, we'll be playing more games. Don't worry. I'm out of school now. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, thank you for watching Mad Father. Yeah. Stay spooky. Stay spooky. Bye. Bye.